Ultra high yielding ETFs have been all the craze as of recently, truly changing what most long term investors, at least some of us older school ones, even considered high yield in the first place. Now, what I mean by this is back in my day, anything over, say, 7, 8, 9% dividend yield was considered pretty high yield and also, in some people's opinions, pretty risky. But now, with some of these ultra high yielding instruments like the Yield Max ETFs, for example, some of these ETFs are yielding upwards to 20, 30, 40, even 100% which is something very unfamiliar to even most seasoned dividend growth investors. Now, in this video, we're going to break down some of these super popular ultra high yielding ETFs, show you what some of the returns have been at least so far, and try to figure out if or if not they're even worth investing into. I have some huge news to share with you guys, my brand new dividend investing ebook and custom dividend tracker that I've been working on for weeks now is finally done. So go ahead and grab a copy down below. It's the first link in my description. Thank you in advance and let's get right into the video. So let's back up for a second. Like I sort of previewed earlier, a lot of dividend investors, a lot of income focused investors are familiar with things like the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF or JEPI, an ETF that utilizes a cover call strategy and is yielding around eight or 9% depending on the time frame. or another popular JP Morgan ETF, the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium or JEPQ, another super high quality ETF in my opinion that utilizes a cover call strategy yielding over 10% trailing 12 months. But as of recently, the game has changed and there's ETFs out here now like the Kony ETF, the Yieldmax Coin Option Income Strategy ETF, which has a distribution rate of over 100% which up until recently, I didn't even know could exist. So the first thing you might be asking is how do some of these ultra high yielding ETFs even offer such massive dividends to investors? Well, in the case of Yieldmax Coin Option Income Strategy ETF or Kony, it basically utilizes a synthetic cover call strategy on an underlying reference stock known as Coinbase. And as you can see, Coinbase is up 357% year to date. Now, because stocks like Coinbase, for example, or ticker symbol coin are what we would consider super high beta, they do offer massive amounts of premium to investors that are looking to sell cover calls on the underlying stock. And because Kony's strategy is built off of the cover call strategy, when the premiums are super high and when the underlying reference stock coin, for example, trades within a certain range or in a certain direction within a monthly time frame. That's exactly when the stars align, if you will, and when ETFs can offer such massive distribution rates like this one. But I promise you it's not all rainbows and sunshine. A lot of these super ultra high yielding ETFs, like Tesla, for example, have seen a lot of price decay as far as actual ETF price return. So even though they're offering massive dividends on a monthly basis, or at least have historically for the most part, investors underlying holding are getting chopped down and down and down as time goes on. So what I mean by this is pretty simple. If you were an investor and you bought a share of Tesla at $20 per share, let's say, and then let's say it drops down to $15 per share. Even if you receive a 50 cent dividend on a monthly basis, which is massive, it doesn't mean that you're even up on your investment because your underlying investment has dropped down so much in price within that time frame. Now, in a perfect world, some of these ultra high yielding ETFs like Tesla, for example, would be able to pay 60 cents, 58 cents, or so on and so forth on a monthly basis to investors and also have somewhat of a stable ETF price. And although we don't have much data to go off of for some of these examples I'm giving because they're relatively new, some of these ultra high yield ETFs have actually been able to do that. If we look at Kony, for example, it's up 34% on the max time frame, and that's not even including those massive dividends. But for the most part, at least I promise you that a lot of these ultra high yielding ETFs are going to see if they're not already going to see massive price decay over time. Another reason why these ultra high yielding ETFs might not be the best investment option is simply put, because a lot of times the underlying stock that they're referencing to is completely running laps around them. If we look right here and compare Tesla, which is the ultra high yielding yield max ETF that references Tesla stock, and compare them both as far as total return goes on the year to date timeframe. So total return is dividends plus price return included. You can see that TSLY is up 63% year to date, which I'm not going to lie is amazing. I'd be more than happy to be up 63% year to date in my portfolio, so I'm not hating whatsoever. And full transparency, I do own shares of TSLY in my portfolio, at least a few. But during that same time frame, it's no secret that Tesla is up 134%, and that's with paying zero dividend. Tesla has not paid a single dividend on a single month all year long, while Tesla has been paying out monster dividends year to date. Now, once again, I will say, either way, if you're up 63% or if you're up 134% on a year to date time frame, I'm personally not with the judge, and I personally would not complain if that was my portfolio. But it still does beg the question of if or if not these super ultra high yielding ETFs are even worth investing into in the first place, 
or if a lot of times you are better off just investing into the underlying, which in this case, of course, is Tesla stock. And this phenomenon does not only just happen when we compare Tesla to Tesla. If you were to compare Coinbase coin compared to Kony, which Kony, of course, references coin. Kony hasn't been around all that long, so we don't have much data to go off of. But on the six month time frame, Kony, even with those massive, massive dividends that we showed you earlier, Kony's up 57%, which again is awesome. But Coinbase, Coin is up 172%. And on the one month time frame, it's even worse. Kony's up 9.45%, where Coin is up 50.68%. Which just goes to show once again, if an investor were to just buy into Coin, the underlying reference stock, even without the massive dividends, they would have been much better off and they'd be up a lot more as far as total return goes. Now, I did say earlier that I personally do own some shares of some of these ultra high yielding ETFs. And for an example, specifically, I do own shares of TSLY. Now, throughout my seven figure portfolio, I, as of right now, at least only own a few hundred shares of TSLY. And as of right now, my reasoning being is that I think it's kind of fun to buy some shares of TSLY. And every few days, I might buy a few shares of TSLY for around 12 bucks, as, at least as of recently, and look at it more as a lottery ticket. Not to mention it's pretty fun getting the massive dividend at least so far on a monthly basis. But all that to be said that I would never utilize TSLY or, or any of these ultra high yielding ETFs, like the YieldMax ETFs, for example, for my overall portfolio. Because although I see them as massive, massive dividend generating tools, I do think that long term, you're going to probably see a much better total return by investing into the underlying. Now, what I mean by that, it's simple. If you want to invest in MSFO, which is the Microsoft Yield Max ETF, you're probably better off just buying Microsoft. If you want to buy the Netflix one, you're probably just better off buying Netflix. And same thing throughout all these, in my opinion. Another very familiar example when it comes to investors investing into a ultra high yielding ETF and maybe even learning a lesson the hard way is QYLD or the Global NASDAQ 100 Cover Call ETF. Now, this is an ETF that I personally started buying like crazy back in 2020 and even in 2021 with an average cost basis across all my portfolios of somewhere probably around $18 or $19 per share. Now, QYLD was appealing to me because it had a well above 10% trailing 12 month dividend yield. But just like most other ultra high yielding ETFs, what comes along with it? More ETF price decay. So even though I was able to generate quite a bit of income over the past few years from QYLD's monthly dividend, which has been pretty nice. There's definitely a good argument that I would have been better off buying into plenty of other investment options, like that of QQQ or even the S&P 500, rather than chasing an ultra high yield like I did personally. But that being said, if you are a dividend income focused investor that is really trying to get your dividend income up, I will say that buying into some of these ETFs is going to be a good, good tool to do so. But when it comes to investing into ultra high yielding ETFs, like some of the ones we showed you in today's video, I now want to hear from you guys down below. Do you or do you not partake and in invest into any of these massive, massive ultra high yielding ETFs for your portfolio? And if so, drop the tickers in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.